Welcome back. We are still working through 1 Samuel 3 here on our Daily Dose Weekend Editions with a specific emphasis on the Masoretic accents. Uh, but first, we've been working through the syntax and translation as usual, so let's get right to work on this one today. Let's read the Hebrew together first. Vaner Elohim Terem Yechbeh Ushemuel Shochev Behechal Adonai Asher Sham Aron Elohim. The full translation uh, would go like this. Now the lamp of God had not yet been quenched or gone out, had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple where there, and we have to supply the verb was, where there was the ark of God. Or we could say, where there the ark of God was. The verse opens with a nominal clause, uh, meaning a noun, ner, or the lamp. Uh, ner here, though, is in construct with Elohim, and so the subject of the nominal clause is the lamp of God. The next part of the initial clause begins with terum, the adverb of time, meaning not yet, followed by the call imperfect 3ms of kava, to quench. Kava here is an R3 he verb, meaning that the third root letter is a he. In the imperfect of the call, the R3 he verbs take a sigol as the theme vowel as we have here, and then a hyric as the performative vowel. The dagesh that we have in the bait here is not indicative of an intensive stem, something like a pl or a pu'al hithpa'el. It's not an intensive dagesh. Rather, it's just simply a dagesh lene. It's in a begot kifat letter, the bait, that is preceded by the absence of sound, indicated by this silent schwa here. The next clause adds to the initial clause with a vav conjunctive and the proper name Samuel followed by the call participle. It's a masculine singular absolute of the root shakav. As a pure substantive, we would read the participle as the one who was lying down. However, in good English, it does take more of a verbal notion, and Samuel was lying down. Now, I'm going to keep going with a straightforward translation here, but the accents, especially the athnach right here, those accents are important for how this full translation ends up, and we'll look at those in a moment. The next phrase is a prepositional phrase, literally, in the temple of the Lord. The verse finishes with the relative clause, further describing the temple of the Lord as which, and we have to supply the to be verb in this case, we would supply was to maintain the past tense context, which or where there was the ark of God. In good English, a smooth version would be something like where the Ark of God was. So now that we have the translation under our belt, let's look at the Masoretic accents in order to avoid the idea that Samuel was lying down in the Holy of Holies, uh, the area of the tabernacle or the tent of meeting, the temple, uh, where the Ark of God was. Most commentators do avoid saying that Samuel was in the Holy Holies, Holy of Holies, knowing that it was forbidden for Samuel to be there where the Ark of God was, much less lying down there. And while commentators usually get this theologically, it makes sense, the Masoretic accents actually make it clear grammatically and syntactically as well. Notice first the placement of the Athnach here. The first thing to remember is that the Athnach is the heaviest break in the sentence after the saluk and the sof pasuk here. So for this first, what we may call half verse with the athnach, um, the athnach should not allow us to translate or associate things directly between the two segments. So things in front of the athnach shouldn't be directly associated with things after it. In other words, the athnach provides a large break here. Therefore, we want to notice a syntactical pause between the idea that Samuel was lying down and the prepositional phrase, in the temple of the Lord. So we don't have to translate the sentence something like this, Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. That's a literal, straightforward translation. But we don't have to have it with the nuance or the implication 
that Samuel was lying down in the Holy of Holies. Let's look now at the smaller divisions of the accents. The next segment that we want to mark off, or the next segments, are the Zakaf segments in each of the lines as we see them here. The Zakaf segments break here and here. With these segments now established, we can see that the clause, and Samuel was lying down, stands as its own clause syntactically. It's broken apart. It's not directly associated with the other clauses. It indeed stands alone. 1 Samuel 3.3 3 is an example of the Athnach marking off a parenthetical idea. Like any good parentheses, it can, in fact, be left out, and the sentence would make good sense. We might say, now the lamp of God had not yet gone out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. That is a perfectly good sentence. The ethnoc segment here, though, introduces a parenthetical idea that Samuel was lying down, maybe as a prelude to Samuel's call that's coming up, that he was asleep or maybe trying to go to sleep when the Lord called to him. So let's read the whole verse with our segments marked off using the brackets here. We get, Now the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down. Again, a parenthetical comment. So we get, The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. So there you have an example of the athnoch, the, the major break in the sentence, offsetting a parenthetical idea. Interestingly, Targum Jonathan explains this verse as Samuel was lying down in the court of the Levites. They make that explicit. This is certainly an addition that the Jewish translators added, but they also knew that Samuel was not lying down in the Holy of Holies. As the scriptures were handed down, the Masoretes preserved the traditional interpretation by providing the accent marks to delineate that Samuel was not lying down in the Holy of Holies. With the accents in place, the Masoretes could, the Masoretes could convey the meaning without having to add interpretation like the Targums did. So with the accents, they could preserve the text and the interpretation of Scripture using these jots and tittles that we call accents. I hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for joining us again today, and I hope uh, we can be of service to you guys. Until next time, shalom.